Cool. I don't know about you guys, but I've been craving some good old fashioned wholesome nonsense. So in today's video, I'm going to see if I can build a modern day witch's broom. Yeah. Remember hover shoes? These things were a pretty short lived trend, maybe because they were like $500, but they're actually one of the coolest gadgets I've personally owned. So the idea with these is that you have two of them and they're basically electronic self balancing platforms that you would stand upon. And the idea is that you can just shift your weight forwards or backwards and they will seemingly read your mind and float you around. I actually featured these really briefly in a video of mine. Yeah, that was a fun one. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before one of the shoes died. It stopped charging and it turns out the battery pack was no good. So now I'm left with one hover shoe and I want to do something with this impressive piece of technology. So that's why I came up with my witch's broom idea. I'll get to that in a second, but first let's take a look at this broken shoe so I can show you what's happening inside the hover wheel. So this is what one of the hover shoes looks like all closed up. And essentially it's got this one big wheel on the bottom. It's nice and wide and it actually has an internal motor, which puts a lot of the weight near the bottom, which already gives this hover shoe a bit of a better balance than you'd expect. If we tear off these pads, you'll see there's this matrix right here, which is just a pressure sensor that lets the wheel know when someone's standing on top. And that's basically just a safety feature. Now we can open up the hood and you'll see that on one side, we have our set of batteries. There's five of these lithium ion batteries. And I know everyone complains about battery technology, but the fact that these five little batteries can move around a human for like 45 plus minutes, that's pretty impressive to me. But what really makes this thing work is what's going on with the circuitry right here. So on these PCBs somewhere, we have an inclinometer, which is basically a tilt sensor that lets the hover shoe know if it's leaning more in one direction or another. So basically, if the shoe starts to tilt in one direction, the wheel will quickly move in that direction to catch its balance. So as long as the rider keeps leaning in one direction, the shoe will start moving in that direction. And if they just stand up straight, it'll do its best to just stop and stay balanced. So there's my simple explanation at how these things work, but really they're like magic. And that's why I decided I had to come up with some magical idea for them. So witch's broom, how's it done? Allow me to demonstrate. Just as the idea with the hover shoe is pretty simple, so is my general idea for this witch's broom. As I mentioned, the way this shoe will work is if there's pressure on one side, it'll basically force the shoe to move in that direction. If there's pressure on the back, it'll move backwards. So now I just need to print some kind of mount that lets me connect a broomstick at an angle like so. And then theoretically, if I push the broomstick downwards, it'll tilt the hover shoe so that it moves forwards. And if I lift up the broom, it'll tilt the hover shoe in the opposite direction and slow me down. Then the rider just needs to wear a set of wheels, mount the broomstick and start flying around. <laughs> or at least that's the idea. So with that straightforward plan, I jumped into Fusion 360 and started modeling my parts. And basically these parts are just gonna mount the broomstick to the hover shoe and allow me to fix it at a certain angle and it kind of just looks like a fancy Swiffer, which is kind of a modern day broom. So in that sense, it couldn't be more appropriate. Anyways, with my design looking good on the computer, I went ahead and started printing them out to make them reality. While it might be more appropriate to print this out in ABS or ASA plastic, I'm just using Matterhacker's Pro PLA because, well, this is a prototype and this is a pretty strong PLA. As you can see, it's got the necessary flex in here, so I think it'll do the job. For the broom mount here, I'm also using Matterhacker's Pro PLA in regolith gray, which is this nice shiny metallic gray. Finally, I used some rep wrapper PLA to print this little knob, which will make it easier to tighten my mechanism without requiring any extra tools. 
All right, I've got all my printed hardware here. It's just three parts that I printed, and we've also got a bit of hardware, some nuts and bolts, and some little M4 screws. And of course, we need our broomstick. And this technically isn't a broomstick, it's an extender for a paint roller, but it's pretty much a broomstick. It's got the standard connector on the end, which could hold a broom, and in this case, we'll be connecting it to my 3D print. And, well, I just like this because it's extendable. And since we're dealing with a brand new technology here, I think some variability might help us fine tune things. I think this will do just fine. But then again, I have no idea if any of this will work. So let's go ahead and put it together and find out. So we're just gonna reconstruct this design as it was made in Fusion 360. Here we have the broom mount, which just fits into place right here. And all these little teeth allow it to lock into position and I can also adjust it in 18 degree increments, which will allow me to do some experimentation to find the best angle for this contraption I'm building. I've got this big bolt to help fasten it into place. And like I said, this little knob slips into place so that I can more easily twist it tight. And we've also got some washers, which will help distribute the force so that this will hopefully withstand a bit more pressure. On the opposite side, we've also got a washer and this little nut, which is just a press fit. We'll stick in our bolt from the other end and then we just twist it tight. There we go. Now we've got a really strong connection. These two parts don't wanna twist at all. But if I wanna make an adjustment, I can just quickly unscrew this, adjust it, retighten it, and now it's still secure, but in a new angle. Finally, to mount our print to the hover shoe here, I'm gonna pull off these pads so that we have access to the screws here. And I still wanna have the pads to protect the pressure sensor and just to give a little bit of cushion to this whole thing. So what I'll do is just cut off the sides of the pads and now I can access those screws while also having the pads. Now we'll go ahead and remove all of these original mounting screws which hold the top in place, but we don't actually need to remove the top we just need to replace those original 12 millimeter M4 screws with these 25 millimeter screws so I can pass them through my 3D printed part as well and still fasten everything closed. By the way, these Bond House Allen keys that I'm using are such nice tools. They were recommended by Adam Savage over on his Tested channel and they just work so much better than those little tiny Allen keys that I've been using that came with my 3D printers. I think it was about time for that upgrade. Anyways, here is our print mounted onto the hover shoe. It looks pretty great. It's nice and sturdy. And we can do a quick test to see that the hover shoe still works. And sure enough, there it is. Balancing like magic. Finally, we can attach the broomstick that just screws into place with the internal threads that I designed on my printed part. And that also seems like a nice solid connection. All right. Construction is complete. I gotta say, the 3D printed parts came together as good as I possibly could have hoped. Everything seems really sturdy. I love the mechanism to adjust the angle of the stick. That might come in handy. Now my only concern is the fact that with this print screwed on, the pressure sensor on the hover shoe is always being pressed. So normally if you fall off, the shoes will stop powering themselves. But this will basically always think someone's standing on it. So even if I fall off, it might just zoom off into the sunset and, well, hopefully it won't impale anyone. We're going to go take this to a nice wide open area where risk is minimized and hope for the best. All right, here we are at my local park. And well, I was originally planning to use some skates so that I could really ride this like a broomstick, but I'm much better on a skateboard. Um, well, I'm kind of terrified about this, but there's really nothing left for me to do besides try it. So let's turn this thing on and fire it up. Oh yeah, this is, this is going to be great. And away we go. Okay, 
well, that was simultaneously super chaotic and yet it went way better than I expected, so that's good news. There are just a few things that went wrong. For one thing, this is pretty unstable, so I'm hoping that I can extend this stick and I'll put it further behind me and make it more stable. I don't know, just a theory. And the broomstick also kept trying to unscrew itself, so I'm gonna tape it down. And I also feel more like a Venetian boat captain than a, a witch, so I think we need to actually get a broom involved. All right, so let's extend this. Is that gonna make it more or less stable? I don't know. Hopefully that'll make this thing not wobble around quite so much. And our broom. All right, this is more like a witch's broom. Now no one can complain in the comments, right? Hold on, let's adjust the angle here. That's why I designed this whole fancy mechanism, right? Oh yeah, that's speed mode. Let's do this. <laughs> This thing is great. It's totally got a mind of its own, just like a real witch's broom. I'm pretty wobbly on it, but I can totally ride it. So I think it's just a matter of honing my skills. And... Wow, I, I did not expect that to work as well as it did. <laughs> I mean, that was the goal. And I am Mr. Make Anything. <laughs> but, wow, it actually worked really well. And pretty much right on the first go, I didn't have to modify my designs or anything. I could not be more pleased. I mean, is there any practical value? Do I see this becoming an actual product? Not really. It's a little bit squirrely and you're probably better off on an electric skateboard. But I had a good time. I definitely had a good time. And uh, yeah, I'm just so happy that it worked out. I mean, the goal from the outset was to create something nonsensical and this definitely fits the bill. Plus, no one died. So that's always good. Anyways, that's it for today's video. So until the next one, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired. electronic motor so it's gonna push me around on my skateboard. Seriously? <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> well good luck with that guy. <laughs> Thanks.